Now, local news about local people. This is Newslink Indiana. Hello, I'm Chris Bavender. Thanks for joining us. Groundhogs are one step closer to equal protection under the law as other animals. State House and Senate committees approved bills that would apply fish and wildlife laws to groundhogs. Although folks in Pennsylvania were excited Wednesday to see Punxsutawney Phil emerge from his home, local animal control expert Tim Gale believes the law might make Hoosiers unhappy if new regulations cause the local groundhog population to increase. Bad thing about groundhogs, they burrow under everything. They'll dig underneath sheds, underneath foundations. If passed, the state could dictate rules about groundhog hunting season and population control. The emergency radio dispatch system of Delaware County is in desperate need of a makeover, according to some county officials. Newslink Indiana's Lindsay Jamison explains why the department pushes so hard for change. Show me a computer on campus that's 15 years old and someone's actively using it. Delaware County Emergency Management Director Bill Gosnell thinks the emergency radio dispatch system is just too old. This equipment is old, it's aging, uh, it needs to, be, needs to be updated, replaced. But how could the emergency dispatch system be out of date? Simple, it's 15 years old. Motorola is no longer supporting most of the equipment, it's outdated. To change the current system, emergency management, the sheriff's department, the fire department, and police must come up with a new solution but they believe it is absolutely necessary. I know that the taxpayers want us to spend money wisely, but when they need emergency services, they're gonna want emergency services. They're not gonna want excuses that a tornado took out our antenna. Officials hope a new system would include more than just one tower, which would expand the coverage area and hopefully eliminate any dead zones. There's a number of locations in the county which are called dead spaces that we can't actually get it, uh, good communications out of. With an estimated thousands of radios that need to communicate, many think it would be better for the community to get a new system. The, the amount of radios that are out there now just kind of overwhelms the system. In Muncie, Lindsay Jameson, Newslink, Indiana. The final decision to be made by the mayor and county commissioners was delayed by the ice storm, but Gosnell believes the changes will be made within the year. Members of the Grace Missionary Baptist Church in Marion will vote again on the removal of Reverend Edward McDowell. The Board of Trustees says McDowell needs to go because of inconsistencies in his role as leader. The board requested a restraining order after McDowell refused to leave following the original vote December 5th. 18 of the 32 members who voted want to remove McDowell. There were some inconsistencies in his uh, administration, mm -hmm. uh, inconsistencies with dealing with the members. Uh, there were some spiritual concerns. Uh, the entire congregation will vote by the end of the month. McDowell's attorney didn't return calls. The Pennsylvania Railroad Station in Richmond has just been added to the list of endangered landmarks by the Historic Landmarks Foundation of Indiana. Newslink Indiana's Aaron Schweitzer explains. Even though trains run by the Pennsylvania Railroad Station daily, the depot, built in 1902, hasn't been in use for many years. Local businesses don't want to see it torn down because of its history and want to see it developed. From the development side is that it would take a lot to bring it back to where it, it could be. This, pro this process of trying to revitalize the depots probably should have been done 30, 40 years ago. But the building is so dilapidated in different areas now that it's very tough uh, to find someone who's willing to do it. Now the depot has a fighting chance at that. It's on this year's list of the historic landmarks. The list was just released Monday. At its prime, the depot contained a restaurant, a newsstand, a barber shop, and a shoe shine stand. And at its peak, more than 25 passenger trains a day stopped at the station. In 2001, volunteers started to get the station's Great Hall back into shape. Our concerns about the depot are that someone uh, uh, looks at it from his, its historical standpoint and says, think about the number of people that traveled through Richmond on ways to different areas. We have presidents that probably stopped through here um, because it's such a, a stopping point uh, if you look at the map nationwide. In Richmond, Aaron Schweitzer, Newslink, Indiana. The Urban Enterprise Zone Association now owns the depot and hopes the addition to the endangered list will attract developers. Congressman Mike Pence introduced two new pieces of legislation Wednesday. The Small Business Health Care Savings Act would make health insurance more affordable for small businesses. 
It eliminates the requirement to purchase guaranteed issue health insurance, which mandates insurers accept any employer of a business of 2 to 50 employees that applies for coverage, regardless of claim history or health status. Pence also introduced the Free Flow of Information Act. It imposes standards that must be met before a court can subpoena a member of the media. The bill's passing would provide protection against forced disclosure of confidential sources. Marcus Bailey joins us now with a look at our weather. Punxsutawney Phil saw his shadow, but we're actually going to see a warm-up this That's weekend. That's right. Well, we're supposed to have six more weeks of uh, winters, uh, according to the Groundhog, but uh, should see some nice temperatures coming up this weekend, maybe into the upper 40s. We'll take a look at how we did today, though. We topped out at 27 was the best we could do. Woke up to 16 degrees here in East Central Indiana. That's right around average for this time of year. See, the daytime is getting a little bit longer as we approach the spring months. We'll take a look at overnight lows for Wednesday evening. We'll see 18 here in Muncie, 23 in the Circle City, 25 up in Chicagoland. It'll be 25 out in Springfield and 31 in Evansville. Thursday highs, you can see the warm air into the west. That will be heading our way into this weekend. You'll see 41 out in Champaign and uh, Springfield, rather 39 up in Chicago. We'll see 36 here in Muncie, 39 in Indianapolis and back in Cincinnati, they'll see 40 degrees. Our weather pattern right now, as you can see, we have some rain that will bring one to two inches of snow to the southern parts of Indiana and to the southern third, maybe an inch just south of Indianapolis on Wednesday evening. We may see here uh, a flurry or two, not much accumulation at all. Back behind this, we see a drier pattern that will be coming our way for the weekend that will bring some sunshine and some warmer temperatures up into the upper 40s for this weekend. But for, t for Wednesday night, rather, we'll see a low of 18, some patchy fog and mostly cloudy skies on Thursday morning. That fog will continue and we'll jump up to 36 degrees under partly cloudy skies. We'll look ahead to the rest of the weekend. We see Saturday and Sunday. We jump up into the 40 Sunday, the highest of those days, 47 degrees on Monday 44 with a chance of rain and then changing over to snow in the evening and on Tuesday we'll see a high of 36 with a rain and snow mix so we'll see a little bit of everything uh, this weekend warm temperatures and then the start of the work week next week we'll start to see the wintery mix again all right thanks Marcus the Eaton Public Library receives no tax monies to survive but as Newslink Indiana's Jason Luzak tells us the community has come together to support the library there's something a little different about the Eaton Public Library. Yeah, we have no tax money at all. The library is completely supported by this small Indiana town. Anita Wright says no one gets a single penny for their work at the library, and because no one can volunteer on Wednesdays, the library today was empty. In order to check out books here, you had to pay a one-year membership fee. Until now. Basically, I, I just felt it uh, imperative that all the children in Eaton should be able to go into the library. Tom Pease is vice president and general manager at Rock 10, a company that makes cardboard in Eaton. Pease got the company to donate $7,000 so the kids of Eaton can use the library for free. The library was a lot, meant a lot to him growing up. And uh, so he wanted to be sure that uh, everybody, all the kids would get to come in here. Well, I came from a, uh, a disadvantaged family. There was 14 of us. And uh, I know how tight money can be for certain people. Pease says he's happy to help. But this, this was a special one. This was for the children. It's very special. In Eaton, Jason Luzak, Newslink, Indiana. Rice says the library still needs volunteers, books, and money. If you'd like to donate, call 765-396-3490. That is Newslink, Indiana. For Marcus Bailey, I'm Chris Bavender. Join us again tomorrow at newslinkindiana.com for more news.